Happy Independence Day to all of our US and indeed Filipino subscribers who also celebrate their independence from the United States on the 4th of July. Remarkably, it has been 244 years since the United States escaped the tyranny and taxation without representation imposed upon them by my forefathers. Where does the time go? Since casting aside your subordination to Britain and the Crown, the United States has become the most powerful nation on Earth, rather like a child that grows up to be much bigger than his dad and can now push him around. Anyhow, I digress. A happy 4th of July to you all, and last month I said I would like to make a US or MLS related video on Independence Day if someone came up with an interesting video idea. For the life of me, I can't find who suggested this idea, to give them a shout out, but someone requested a USA or USMNT starting 11 if every player who was or would have been eligible to represent the United States, had they not represented another national team, had chosen to do so. Subscribers will know I've made videos like this for Jamaica, Nigeria, Turkey, Ireland and many more, and this is a surprisingly interesting one I think. Non-subscribers, well, what are you playing at? Hit that subscribe button now, and I will very briefly explain the premise of these types of videos for you. Essentially, I take a pool of all players who could and indeed do represent the United States at international level, and from both of those groups, I come up with the best possible what-if for them. Crucially, in the case of the United States, just having a green card does not make you eligible for the USMNT. You have to meet FIFA's eligibility rules. Hopefully that's all clear, if not, it should become so as we go through the 11. Here is my look at the United States men's national team if all eligible players had declared for them. Goalkeeper, Zach Staffan. America has always produced competent goalkeepers, which I've often suspected could be due to America's more popular sports like baseball and American football, all being very hand orientated and requiring catching of a ball, meaning there are more transferable skills to being a goalkeeper than there are to being an outfield player. There are a few goalkeepers who represent other nations that could have played for the US, and I'll come to them later on, but none finer than Zach Steffen in my opinion. Born in Pennsylvania, Steffen began playing football or soccer at the age of 5, although he started out as a defender, so he doesn't really fit in with my theory about why the US produced better goalkeepers than outfield players. Oh well. Steffen is still young in goalkeeping terms, aged 25, and he was signed by Manchester City last summer. Capped 17 times by the USMNT to date, Stefan is yet to turn out for the Citizens, spending most of this season on loan with Fortuna Dusseldorf. I suspect his long-term future lies away from the Etihad, but he's no doubt good enough to be a number one in one of Europe's top leagues. Right back, Trent Alexander-Arnold. One of the biggest names and biggest talents in this entire 11, I must admit that before researching this video, I had no idea that Trent Alexander-Arnold could have turned out for the USA. Of course, having been born in Liverpool, Alexander Arnold is neither American nor English. He is Scouse, but there isn't a FIFA-affiliated Scouse national team, so he still had a decision to make on that front. Alexander Arnold is eligible to represent the United States because his maternal grandmother, Doreen Carling, who also happened to be Alex Ferguson's first steady girlfriend, moved to the United States and married. Despite this, Alexander Arnold represented England from the age of 15 onwards, making his senior debut as a teenager, and somewhat ironically, scoring his first international goal against the United States in 2018. Nevertheless, Alexander Arnold could have played for America, he's one of the best fullbacks on earth, and consequently, he's an obvious inclusion in this 11. Centre back, John Brooks. On the right side of centre-back, we have another actual US international, although, oddly enough, one that wasn't born in the United States. John Brooks is the son of an American serviceman from Chicago, and he has never lived in the United States. Born and raised in Berlin, Brooks has a tattoo of Berlin on his right shoulder, and one of Illinois on his left shoulder. The big 6 foot 4 inch centre-back came through the youth ranks at Hertha Berlin, and he went on to play over 100 games for the Bundesliga side. He has been with Wolfsburg since 2017, and a full US international since 2013. Brooks has won 38 caps in total for the United States to date, and he's the only actual US international in our back four. Centre-back, Romero Funes Mori. The second player in this 11 with links to both the United States and to Merseyside, to many of you, Romero Funes Mori will be best known for the three seasons which he spent at Everton. Born in the city of Mendoza, Argentina, Funes Mori's family moved to America when he was 10 years old. Funes Mori played in the FC Dallas youth ranks before returning to Argentina, and he made his international debut for La Alba Celeste in 2015, shortly before signing for Everton from River Plate for £9.5 million. 
Funes Mori left Merseyside behind in 2018, joining current club Villarreal, and given that he has won 26 caps for Argentina at the age of 29, I think it's safe to say he would be a regular fixture for the US MNT. Left back, Jeremy Tolian. There is a distinct lack of talent at left back, even when one draws upon all possible US MNT internationals, so my choice is a natural right back. Whilst Jeremy Tolian is primarily a right sided fullback or wing back, he has often played on the left, and he looks very comfortable when doing so. Attacking fullback Tolian was born in Stuttgart to an African American father who died before he was born and a Croatian mother. Consequently, Tolian could represent three different national teams, and he is as yet uncapped at senior level. The 25 year old did represent Germany at multiple youth levels, in addition to winning a silver medal with the German Olympic team at the 2016 Summer Olympic Games in Brazil. Quick, versatile, and still with plenty of room to improve, Tolian is currently playing for Sassuolo in Serie A on loan from Borussia Dortmund. Defensive midfield Michael Bradley. Just as we did in defence, we have one actual US MNT international in midfield, and that man is Michael Bradley. Bradley is a veteran of the game now, age 32, and he is closing in on Kobe Jones' international caps record. Bradley has won 151 caps for the USMNT to date, making him the joint 25th most capped male footballer of all time, and he is still an integral part of the United States' international setup. Bradley was born in New Jersey and first made his name with the Metro Stars, now the New York Red Bulls, before heading to Europe. Bradley is one of only a handful of US internationals to have succeeded in Europe, starring for the likes of Heerenveen, Mönchengladbach and Roma, before returning to the MLS with Toronto FC in 2014. Bradley is a smart, hard-working and tough-tackling central or defence midfielder, so he makes my 11. Defensive midfield Thomas Delaney Danish international Thomas Delaney has links to both Ireland and America. During the 1840s, Delaney's Irish paternal great-grandfather moved to America to escape the Great Famine that devastated Ireland. Consequently, Delaney's grandfather was born in America and his father has US citizenship, meaning Delaney could have represented the US at international level. Having been born and raised in Copenhagen, Delaney's allegiances always lay with Denmark though, and he has won 43 caps for the nation of his birth. A tireless runner renowned for his graft, teamwork and ability to win the ball back, Delaney and Bradley would make for a really shrewd and experienced midfield shield. Right wing, Christian Pulisic. It's good news for supporters of the USMNT that one of the best players in this 11 is an actual USMNT international, and that man is Christian Pulisic. Undoubtedly the finest US soccer player of a generation, Pulisic has the potential to become the greatest American footballer of all time, and those are bold claims to be making confidently about a 21 year old. Pulisic was born in Pennsylvania to a soccer mad dad who had a successful indoor soccer career himself, scoring almost 300 goals for the Harrisburg Heat. Pulisic moved around a little in his childhood, even spending a year in England, but he settled in Germany after being signed by Borussia Dortmund at the age of 16. Quick and brilliant on the ball, Pulisic became the US MNT star man before he'd even turned 20, and he joined Chelsea for £58 million in January 2019. Having taken a little bit of time to settle into life in West London, Pulisic is beginning to show his class. He scored 7 goals in 19 Premier League appearances, and he is rapidly becoming one of Frank Lampard's most important players. Attacking midfield, Diego Valeri. As I said in the introduction, simply having a green card does not qualify you to represent the USMNT, you have to meet FIFA's eligibility criteria. Unlike fellow US imports and green card holders like Joseph Martinez and Nicolas Ladero though, Diego Valeri does meet those criteria. The 34 year old playmaker, who has long been among the best players in the MLS, has been living in the United States for 7 years. That's more than the five years FIFA demands, and given that all three of Valeri's international appearances for Argentina came in friendly games, theoretically, he could actually still switch to representing the US in real life. That seems unlikely given his age, but Valeri is a real talent, and therefore a worthy inclusion in this 11. An intelligent set-piece specialist who perennially ranks among the division's most creative players, Valeri is a three-time MLS Best 11 inclusion, a four-time MLS All-Star, and he was the division's MVP in 2017. Left wing, Giovanni Reina. Oddly enough, on the left flank is a US youth international who was born in Sunderland and hasn't yet represented any nation at senior level. Giovanni Reina is eligible to represent the United States, England, Portugal, Argentina, and in theory, if he were to live there for long enough, Germany as well. 
That is a plethora of nations, of which the US is arguably the worst in footballing terms. But Rayner has made it clear that he has no intention of representing any other nation. Rayner was born in Sunderland, since that is where his father Claudio Rayner was playing his football at the time, and the family returned to the US when Giovanni was four years old. He lived in the US up until the age of 16, when he joined the Borussia Dortmund Academy, and a year on, Rayner has had an impressive first season in the Bundesliga. He has made 18 appearances for Dortmund as they have challenged for the Bundesliga title this season, and a senior US MNT debut is surely imminent. Rayner can play out wide or through the middle, but it's wide on the left that he starts in this 11. Centre forward, Rogelio Funes Mori. We've already had one Funes Mori in this 11, and given Rogelio Funes Mori's form for Monterey in Liga MX, I think it would be remiss of me not to include the pair. The twin brothers both spent much of their childhood in the United States, and Rogelio won the 2008 Sueno MLS scouting program designed to give undiscovered talent an opportunity in an elite MLS academy. Funes Mori ultimately returned to Argentina to join River Plate like his brother before making a move to Europe, but unlike Romero, Rogelio didn't make Europe his permanent home. He returned to North America in 2015 with Monterey in Liga MX, where he has since become a goal-scoring machine. Funes Mori isn't the quickest or most well-rounded of centre forwards, but he's sneaky, good in the air, and he possesses a lethal finish on either foot. Since signing for Monterey, Funes Mori has bagged 106 goals in 205 games, and I think he's better than any current US MNT centre forward. That's my starting 11 wrapped up, but on the bench I've gone for Republic of Ireland international Darren Randolph, former Serbia international Nevin Subotic, former Japan star Kotoku Sakai, Mexican international and Guadalajara wide man Isaac Brutzuela, and a trio of current USMNT internationals in the form of Ajax fullback Sergino Dest, Lil forward Timothy Weir, and RB Leipzig midfielder Tyler Adams, with a particularly honourable mention out to Fabian Johnson. So that's it for today's video. Thank you all for watching. If you are watching this video in the US or in the Philippines, then I hope you have a fantastic Independence Day. And you know that I appreciate you tuning in and supporting the channel wherever you live and wherever you're from. That's all from me. Give us a like if you enjoyed the video, leave your views down below in the comments, and make sure to subscribe to HITT7s to see more from me in the future.